Okay, so today we are going to talk about mainly about telecom. Okay, let's understand, you know, uh, what is telecom sector. First of all, you know, if you have to do anything, whether doing financial modeling, whatever, uh, you have to understand uh, what is telecom and what its business is. Okay, what the company is and what it is doing basically in that uh, sector. So we talk about, you know, uh, telecom. Mm -hmm. Telecom today, uh, in telecom, uh, currently there are three main players. Three plus one, we say. Three are the private players and one is a public sector. Please, uh, now, so uh, I was telling you that there are three, three plus one companies which are left today after the consolidation which has happened in the telecom sector. Three main private players are, can you name them? Uh, so Manav? Huh? Reliance, Reliance Geo. Reliance Geo. Okay. Airtel. 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 Vodafone Idea. And uh, MTNL or BSNL, wherever they are present in whatever state, like in Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, we have MTNL and all other places they are BSNL. So there are three plus one, they say, three private players and one public uh, sector player. You know, when it all started, there were, you know, just a few years back, there were about eight to ten players. Okay. And they have consolidated and it become only one. After Reliance Geo come in, so it created a lot of competition among the players. So many weak companies, they, you know, merged with the existing companies and now it has become three plus one. You know, the telephone was started in way back in 1995. The mobi mobile, uh, mobility, um, mobile companies came to India uh, way back in 1995. Okay. So there were only two players. There were only two telecom players. In, and, you know, whole of the, uh, you know, telecom in India is divided into 22 or 23 circles, we say. There are three, 23, you know, telecom circles, whole of India is divided into, okay? Like, you know, we have Delhi, one circle, Haryana uh, is, you know, uh, one. Then UP East, UP West, there are two circles. Entire Northeast is one circle. So, altogether, there are 22 or 23 telecom circles at the moment, yeah. Uh, you know, actually, when the tel that's a good question, you know, what is the circle concept? So, when the telecom started in India, uh, so it was decided, yeah, please join. Good morning. Some more students are coming? Okay, so just to again, you know, summarize what we are understanding, we are trying to understand what is the telecom sector. Before we do any kind of uh, financial modeling, uh, I mean, that's the last, you know, thing to be done before we must understand what business the telecom companies are doing. Okay. So I told that currently there are uh, three plus one telecom player, I mean, companies in India. Three are the private players, like he said, Airtel, Vodafone, uh, Vodafone Idea and uh, Reliance Geo and the last one being either BSNL or MTNL, wherever they are present. Okay. So they are four players. So telecom started in India in way back in 1995. You know, that time uh, the government decided to allot licenses, give licenses to the mobile, you know, companies to start their mobile business in India. So, you know, a lot of groups in India, they were interested in this business, but uh, they didn't have the expertise in terms of technical expertise. So they did, you know, they collaborated with foreign companies like, you know, AT&T of USA, where today it is collaborating with Idea Vodafone. Okay. And... Um, British Telecom and so many other companies. Okay, so they came to India and they became the partners of the Indian industry, uh, telecom industry. Each player. Okay, so it was you know one Indian businessman group plus a foreign company. They joined hands to form a company way back in 1995. So uh, you know whole of India is divided into 22 telecom circles, if I'm right, not 23. Uh, it's been changing because, uh, you know, because the states gets named Uttarakhand and all those states have been split. So uh, the circles get a little bit more or less. So the all, all of India is divided into 20, 23 telecom circles. To name it like Delhi is one circle. Okay. UP East and UP West are two circles. That means one, two, three. Similarly, entire Northeast is one circle. Okay. Now it was done with some kind of a logic at that time, depending upon, you know, how much population, uh, you know, each circle has. So maybe based on that or maybe based on, you know, a kind of some telecom uh, geography prevailing at that time. And uh, there were two players who were allotted licenses um, in each circle. Like from Delhi, it would be either Airtel 
I mean, it's the oldest player, incumbent player. And uh, uh, then that time it was Hutch. Uh, now it has became Vodafone and then it's become Vodafone Idea. Because a lot of, you know, combinations have happened uh, during the journey of telecom. So the two licenses were issued uh, in each circle. And there were two different, different players everywhere. Bharti may be present in most of the circles. Okay. And uh, that time, you know, uh, a company was called uh, Builda Tata at and uh, which became then Idea Cellular and now it has become Vodafone Idea. So I joined Builda Tata at and way back in 2001 when the name was Builda Tata at and My, you know, uh, during that time, the name of the company was changed to Idea Cellular. Okay, so now two licenses were issued in each circle. And... Uh, there was a huge license fee which was collected from each player running into several thousand crores so that was the charge which the government has put uh, that time and um, they started you know their mobile business in india at that time if you remember a mobile phone call was 16 rupees a minute incoming was 8 rupees and outgoing was 16. so we started with a very high tariff the mobile was also very expensive on an average it would be costing around 50,000 rupees at that time which was quite expensive in those days <clears throat> so it took off but it was not taking you know uh, not many you know people were coming and subscribing to mobile because of the expensiveness to it so whenever you know even 2001 you know when i joined uh, telecom uh, sector or telecom sector there were only 50 lakhs people who were owning mobile within india today they're about you know 83 crore people who own mobile in India. So that is the kind of explosion which has happened in the from way back in 2001 to 2022. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You're right. So, uh, you know, there were uh, two players who were allotted licenses and they had to pay, uh, you know, they had to, you know, they were told to pay a huge license fee, but it was, you know, tried it was fixed in installments and they were given a license for i think 10 years or 20 years so whenever you you know want to become a player in telecom you want to style mobile services so you have to get a license from the dot so dot allotted licenses to all these uh, players and uh, charged a huge pretty handsome amount of sum which was to be paid in installments but gradually what happened was that uh, these companies were not able to garner more subscribers because it was very expensive. So in 1999 or 1998, all the foreign players, you know, uh, you know, that time, you know, particularly uh, our tele density, that means how many people own uh, either a fixed line or mobile per hundred was less than 0.2 or 0.3, even less than one. So there was per one person, less than one person is having mobile per hundred people in India. So that time it was decided that, you know, we should go mobile so that, you know, it will ultimately help the economy to grow. But it was not taking uh, so much uh, leaps because of very high expensive nature of the telephone in India. So in 1998 or 99, all the telecom players, they, you know, the foreigners who came into India, they were, you know, packing up and going back because they found that, you know, it was not, you know, giving them enough returns or uh, because of the heavy cost involved telecom equipments are also very costly those days the wireless equipments and everything so they were packing up their bags and going but all the indian counterparts they met the prime minister of india uh, that time atul bihari vajpayee was the prime minister and sukram was the telecom minister okay so they met the prime minister and prime minister called the the telecom minister also sukram and they told that you know um, they i mean tale that you know the, the things are not working so he listened to them and he announced he told that he will be soon you know coming up with a revision in the policy so that you all comfortable and your all foreign counterparts can you know stay in india and mobile can be offered because mobile is so important for the country so uh, then a, a migration policy was announced in 1999 under the telecom minister and advised by atul bari vajpai so they waived off all the fee which you know telecom players were supposed to pay and introduced yeah come good morning and introduced a new system which was basically that all the telecom players have to pay a license fee which will be in a uh, you know a percentage of their revenue and whole of india was divided into 20 to 23 telecom circles At that time there were 22 telecom circles and four metros 
so it was around 26 so uh, all a great circles like you know delhi mumbai Cal calcutta maharashtra or karnataka whatever they were supposed to pay 12 percent license fee on whatever revenue they are generating mm -hmm. and b circles were supposed to pay 10 percent and c circles like bihar or northeast they were they were supposed to pay eight percent of their revenue as license fee so it became a, quite a relief that if you earn money you have to pay license fees all that you know thousands of crore rupees which were supposed to be payable by the telecom players so they were waived off uh, so all that you know telecom circles were divided into either a category b category or c category depending upon the economic situation of that circle if it is bihar or maybe up it was classified as c circle where the license fee would be eight percent okay uh, circle is i told you the 22 telecom circle and four metros that time so this was fixed basis on the population and uh, you know whatever the, the idea of the telecom was so it was decided that entire northeast will become one circle okay so um, so keep asking question that's very important and very good so uh, so that you know 2001 1999 you know it changed the whole mobile telephony uh, you know kind of a system and the incoming uh, outgoing call which was 16 dropped down to 5 rupees per minute it became 5 rupees per minute and uh, the and gradually the incoming call was became zero that means you don't have to pay any money on an incoming call where you were supposed to be 8 rupees earlier and 16 rupees for outgoing it came crashing down to 5 rupees by the time i joined telecom it was 2001 the outgoing call became just 2 bucks and incoming was free after some time maybe 2002 to 2003 so it became free so it led to an explosion in the telecom industry so a lot of people started taking mobile because it become now quite you know reasonable the cost of wireless equipments were also coming down new technology was being there so a uh, tower which used to cost about two crores in that time in 1995 became almost half and today it's you know maybe at five lakh rupees which was two crore rupee an equipment at the time when the telecom started in india so um, things were becoming cheaper and the new policy you know assured more uh, i mean better ground for all the telecom players so uh, now the government decided that they are going to wave off all the money which they are going to recover from these players so you know then you know what happens is that the ruling party has to come with, with some kind of a you know thing where you know to satisfy the opposition and uh, just to you know justify what they have done so what they did was they announced now instead of two players in each circle there will be now four players so there will be more competition now earlier there were only two telecom players in each circle like in delhi it was uh, uh, Airtel and Hutchison, which became now Idea Vodafone after Vodafone merger and then Voda and Ideas also got merged. So uh, it became a four player, you know, kind of a scenario. And the third player was basically either MTNL or BSNL, wherever they are present. So the third player was either BSNL or MTNL. Yeah. And the fourth player, uh, they announced that they are going to auction. The license and everybody has to bid for the license so it was open to the new private entrants to come into the telecom industry so uh, that time the idea seller which was already there in form of builder party entity they applied for delhi license likewise you know everywhere everybody applied for a license and they got a license after paying some amount of just hold on for a sec okay i'll i'll i'll, I'll open some questions for you Okay, then you can ask. So then the fourth player was basically, so it became a four player industry. Okay. Uh, in everywhere. Where the third player was BSNL or MTNL. And the fourth player was any other fourth operator. Now the only problem was basically, you know, uh, when the telecom players, you know, they provide telecom services, they need frequency or spectrum. Okay, which is called the bandwidth. So we'll be discussing about that. That's very important to un people to understand because if you don't understand that, then you don't, can't do any financial modeling. Okay, and it will help you. You know, it will put you in a firm footing when you're doing any kind of analysis of a company like telecom. Okay, so uh, uh, that time uh, there was a frequency band which is called 900 megahertz, 
which was being allotted to the two incumbent players in 1995. So now it was being shared with the MTNL or BSNL, which is going to be the third player. So the 900 megahertz band was a premium band. Okay. Which, why would it premium? Because, you know, it requires uh, less of, you know, towers. Signal strength is very good. <coughs> so it requires let of, less of capex in terms of capital expenditure to put all the wireless equipments and go mobile. And 1800 megahertz bandwidth was the second bandwidth which was open for commercial use. Uh, and it was given to players like the fourth player, like Idea in Delhi. And elsewhere, there will be other players. I don't remember all of them. So, uh, so it became 900 megahertz bandwidth and 1800 megahertz bandwidth. Now, all these bandwidths or the spectrum, so this is very important, so please listen carefully, okay? So, these bandwidths were being used by defense forces earlier for using their radars and, you know, all their aeroplanes when they fly. So, they manage <coughs> these, uh, you know, equipments, defense equipments by all the armed forces, they were using these uh, spectrum. Now, this spectrum needs to be freed from the defense use. So, government decided that they will get it freed from them and allot it to the telecom players. But then the defense had to migrate to a new frequency band. Okay. So, they, you know, asked the government for some kind of a compensation. So, government said, okay, you will be compensated. So, whatever money you will be pay, I mean, you have to pay. So, we will collect from the telecom companies as a charge for using the spectrum. And then only now, you know, we hear about the spectrum allocation and, you know, 2G scam which happened because all these, you know, spectrums were al allocated earlier on a different kind of a formula on a some percentage basis. So I got involved into that. So we were always calculating, you know, how much we are supposed to pay to, to DOT for using the, the bandwidth. But then, you know, to change, they said it will be now auctioned. And I think the first auction brought them almost like 1 lakh crores to the government. Okay. And that is what one would say, I would say it was a downfall of the telecom because they had to pay a huge amount of money, you know, and many countries were doing the same and many countries was not even charging anything because they're freely available in the air. Water is also freely available, but we charge, we have to pay charge because there is all systems which are there. So, uh, so government said, okay, we will make a charge on the spectrum and that will be collected from the telecom players and it will be paid back to the defense forces. So they auctioned and whatever I mean, the money which was being collected, they were handing over to defense forces. But now the amount became so huge. So government became greedy. So they wanted that this money can be used for the our development purposes also. So at that time, the 2G scam also you came because, you know, they found the telecom player was paying huge, so huge amount now and they have been given almost free spectrum in the earlier era. Okay. So that created a stir in India that time. So anyway, so 900 and 1800 bandwidths, you know, uh, megahertz uh, were given to all the telecom players. Mm -hmm. Now, just to give in some idea about, you know, this spectrum a little bit. So uh, 900 spectrum, okay, which is called 900 premium band, okay. So I'm just recording this lecture also in case if you want to hear it later on, you can just listen to it. So I have to be a little louder so that my voice can be done, I'm not bearing a microphone. So, so I told you that there is a 900 megahertz bandwidth and there is almost 1800 also which was later on allotted as a fourth player. Okay, 1800 megahertz. Huh? Yeah, 900 is no there, 900 is going to be lost. Just to give you something, you know, there was another megahertz bandwidth which was 800. 1800 Reliance Fighter, you know, got it, which is still had a lot of scope. So there was another bandwidth which was from 800 megahertz. Okay. So 800 megahertz was given to Reliance before Reliance Geo came into when Dhiru Bhai Amani was alive, when the company was a combined entity. <coughs> so they were given 800. And, you know, there was, you know, because the mobile was very expensive. So government wanted to, you know, that government mobile should be, be held by everyone even, you know, the smallest guy. So it was called Poor's Man Mobile. So, you know, Reliance said, okay, we will do that job. So they were given 800, which is a little inferior bandwidth. Okay. So they came up with a technology called CDMA. And these new telecom players, they were following the TDMA technology. I'll talk about that. It's very interesting part. So they were using 800 uh, Reliance. 
and maybe Tata Tele that time. Tata company also was providing this, uh, you know, uh, services in very remote parts of like Bastar and, you know, Adivasi areas. They were providing that services, 800 megahertz. So they started with that. <laughs> so 900 megahertz is actually nothing but 890 to 915 to 935 to 960. So this is actually the bandwidth. This is, you think this is a frequency, a little, you know, very simple. So, think that there is a road, highway road. There are two sides to the road. Okay. Fine. So, this is a bandwidth. When we speak on a mobile, what happens? When I call on a mobile, I am calling, you know, uh, that is creating an analog signal. Okay, which is converted into digital packets, 0101. 0, 1. So they're like, you know, eight digits uh, becomes one English letter word. Eight uh, uh, bytes is equal to one, one or eight bits is equal to one byte. So it converts into the machine language and the packets of information, they start flowing in the air. Okay, they will travel through this. Suppose this is the handset. Okay, so when I make a call, that the... In the imaginary road which is in the air, which is, has a highway kind of thing, between that there is a gap. I tell you why the gap is here. So the packets of information will start flowing in the air and it will go to a BTS, a tower, okay, situated on the rooftop of a house. Okay. And then it will transmit that packets of information to the telephone exchange. And then uh, suppose I'm making a call to Manav. Manav picks up the call. And he replies, I say hello. So my hello will be converted into digital packets. It will go to the BTS here. Then it will keep traveling to the BTS and to the telephone exchange and come to his handset. And he will reply, yes sir, how are you? Now his packets of information will also start moving from here. So there are two places. One is when I am speaking, my call is coming from this point to this channel. When he is replying or he's speaking, his call is coming from this. So there is no, uh, there's a clarity. You know, earlier, and it's called the duplex system. Earlier there was simplex, when you used to have a telephony, where you know, depends, the thing they'll say, uh, so the, oh, hello, sir, uh, I'm so and so, and I'm so pretending so and so, and say, oh, and the other person will say, yes, sir, and then he'll also speak, and he'll say, oh. So that means, about two persons can talk at a time, but they have to hold on to the conversation, and say over and the other person speaks because they were using the same channel. Now there are two channels. Okay. One when person speaks, the call goes like this, and then the call comes back, the reply comes back on the handset. Is that okay? So so this is the bandwidth. Okay. And this is in between there is 25 megahertz both sides. Okay. Right. Spectrum. And each 25 megahertz is equal to 2,500 uh, or 2,000 uh, thousand kilohertz. Okay, 2,000, 25,000 kilohertz. Okay, fine. Just to complicate a bit. And if I divide with 20, so there will be 500 voice channels. There are 500 voice channels. So there were 500 voice channels. So that means 500 conversations are possible at a given point of time. But there are so many people, because also people are having a mobile, so if that is a limitation, then it would actually uh, not go further. Fine. So uh, now these companies, they follow TDM, Time Division Multiplex. So each 200 kilohertz channel will carry 8 uh, conversations. They are all codified. So whenever you know I am calling Manu, so the first thing that will happen would be there will be a code created between me and him. Okay. So my packets of information will be coded and they will start going into the air, into this 200, uh, one of the channel here. So there are eight possible voices which can be pumped in into one channel. So that means it will become now 8 into 500. So how much? 4,000? 
Eight five is how much? Forty. Forty. Okay. So four thousand people can now talk, but that was also not good because there are so many people who will be talking at the same time. It can happen. Okay. So they knew that the technology had grown very fast. So they have sort of reused of uh, you know spectrum. That means the same spectrum which is being used by someone after the just a few meters away, that channel will be again the one uh, kind of a new channel. People can still talk into that. So the same science can be repeatedly used over a distance. Okay. So there is one talk, another talk. Second talk, the same channel, the channel is being used, which is just you know a few hundred meters away. And that channel will carry eight, uh, four thousand calls in this, uh, you know, spectrum. So that was called reuse. So two things very important which happened. One was, you know, the TDMA, where you know uh, the packets were coded, and then uh, the reuse of the spectrum. That means the same spectrum can be used again all over, over a distance. Okay. So I suppose I am talking in a channel, in one of the channels. To Madam, now she can make a call, and she will be using the same channel, but little bit few meters away. And the channel is the same channel is being used repeatedly again and again. So, with less to the explosion and the commercial use of these frequencies. After all this was done, then only the telephony started in India. All this ha thing happened. So, gradually over 1950 to 1990, it might have happened, and then things uh, you know became commercially usable. Is that clear? So there is an imaginary road in there where you know two people are talking and there is a 200 kilohertz voice channel which is carrying eight you know uh, packets of information. Eight people can talk, a pair of people can talk and there are two lines, one for incoming, one for outgoing so that the packets don't collide and there is no data loss and we can hear it very carefully. Now the Reliance on the other hand was using 800 which is called CDMA te technology which is called code division multiplexes. So in that, there are 40 channel, 40 people can talk at a time in the same channel, okay, instead of eight. But it is like, you know, traveling in an air-conditioned coach or a general compartment. So you have the same experience that time. Reliance was good, but it, the, 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 the uh, 900 megahertz was far better, I mean, equipped and better because the voice clarity and everything was very good as compared to 800 megahertz, which was used by Reliance and Tata way back in 2001, 2002. And now everybody has shifted to almost like, you know, into the GSM 4A and people are using now uh, this thing. But 800 is still being used, okay, because it's a very costly, you know, spectrum. I don't think Reliance has surrendered that. Okay, yeah, questions? Huh, that, that, that gap is in the space provided so that the, the packets of information which are moving in the air, they don't collide and don't, you know, uh, you know, there will be data loss when we speak. Suppose I am speaking and the other packet is passing through in a very close this thing. So it was just a, a kind of a, a, a gap which was kept into the spectrum so that two people can talk. Is that clear to all of you? Okay. So let's begin with this uh, little bit this and some more kind of history will come. Okay. So if you look at today, there are uh, three plus one players. Okay. Now Bharti, Vodafone, MTNL, they are listed players in the stock exchange. Whereas Reliance Geo is actually listed as Reliance Industries. It's a part of the Reliance Group. So it's not a separate listing. But... To get a data, it becomes a little difficult for Reliance Geo. Okay. Otherwise, also Reliance is such a company where the data becomes very difficult for them, for that company to release so easily. But whatever information which is available today, uh, which is available in the public domain, Bharti is the, the top in terms of the revenue. If you look at the revenue of Bharti, it is 1,28,000 crores. So overall, you know, total revenue of all the telecom sector is 2,80,000 crores as of today annually. Okay. Or announced, I think, 60,000 there about per quarter. So, Bharti is 1,28,000. Vodafone is 40,000. MTNL is only 1,000. And Reliance Geo is 1,12,000. And there is another trend called BSN, which I am not included because that is present in the United States. Okay. So, we can even have a look at that. But again, you don't get much of information for BSN. Of course, they are uh, I mean, uh, amounts of their things published. They are also running into losses. So, then we come to EBITDA. You know how much? They earn in terms of data. Now, we always look at such companies that we capital expected in terms of data. Okay. And if you look compared to the companies, uh, then you should look at two things, EBITDA and EBITDA mar margin. If you have to compare two companies, back to back. Why? Because of the depreciation, 
which can give up from country to country, within the country, people can follow state line, or written down values, so depreciation can disturb the properties. Similarly, interest, many people are, you know, lavish, some people are not lavish, some people are using all money, some are using a lot of money, so it can disturb the properties of the property, but if you want to know operationally, if something is going fine, okay, we should just focus on something which is called greater habit. Yeah. Then the taxation, again the taxation rates can differ. In India also there are about three or four kinds of taxation rates for various kinds of companies. Go across there are different taxation rates. So if you compare two companies within the world, then the EBITDA becomes more important. Amortization is all the intangible assets which the company owns. They have to amortize, like you know, telephone companies have because they have taken a license. They are paying license fee to the government and which is getting amortized. So <laughs> so, biggest item of the expense is amortization. We'll look into that later on. So, if you look at in terms of profitability, in terms of you know EBITDA, then uh, Bharti Airtel, their EBITDA is also growing. We'll just look at it. So, it's 50%. So, highly profitable in terms of EBITDA. Uh, Vodafone, 41%. Again, not that they are not making money, but they are making money in terms of Vodafone, in terms of EBITDA. MTNL is in losses. 1000 crores of turnover. Okay. And Reliance Geo, which is, you know, 39,035% EBITDA. So, their EBITDA is less, but uh, they are very profitable. As the company is showing their 80,000 crores profit as compared to Bharti EBITDA of 10,000. Okay. Vodafone is in losses, 38,000 crores. Okay. Their entire equity is buying off. Okay. And MPL is again in losses. Now, of course, Reliance Geo is very difficult to, you know, you know be very sure about the numbers. Even if they publish, because I don't live in land, so I know they're working there. Okay? But they are showing that they are making huge amount of money okay, from the this. And the last this thing is R2, which is called the average revenue per user, very important term in telecom. And this is a term which has become most relevant today. There are so many other terms earlier, which has become not redundant. So I'll talk about that. R2 is average revenue per user. You take the total revenue and divide by the total number of subscribers you get how much money each company is generating per subscriber. So, Anji? This is per month. That's a good question. So we are going to, when we do the financial modeling, we may actually multiply with 20 to make it the annual revenue. Fine. So, Bharti Airtel, if you look at the R2, is today the highest, 178. And Reliance is 177. Vodafone Idea, 131. And MTN is 79. Now, these R2s have undergone change. In the last one year, it has increased by about 10 to 12 percent. All the American companies that are higher, prepaid cards. Now, they are most of the prepaid subscribers that we have. And today, almost 98 percent is prepaid and 2 percent is only postpaid. But when I was, you know, working in two, way back in 2001, that time 90 percent was postpaid and 10 percent was prepaid. And now it is almost reversed. The prepaid is the order of the day, it's 98 percent. And 2% is only postpaid. Postpaid is that you pay the, you get the bill and make the payment later. Okay. So, postpaid and prepaid. And that time when I was working in telecom in 2001, the ARPU was close to about 900 or 1000 rupees per person. Okay. So, it has come down to almost like 178 bucks. It's the lowest in the world. Okay. Fine. So, that time in 2001, this ARPU was uh, close to about 1000 rupees per subscriber. Okay. Now, look at the market share of uh, each company uh, are you able to see the screen so if you look at reliance captures the highest market share which is 35 percent and uh, followed by airtel which is having 31 percent of the market share and vodafone is 21.83 and it's shrinking and many people are leaving vodafone idea because as we see the numbers month on month they have gone down i don't know from which number to which number but as they have gone down even the last number they have reported a, a great amount of churn you know a lot of customers, they churn out of the, this thing. So, we look at the churn ratio of each company to see, you know, how, what is the stickiness of the subscribers to that. Churn ratio was close to about 4 to 5 percent when that time when I was working in telecom. So, it used to be, it should be like that. But after the number portability which came, where, you know, anybody can port their numbers and shift to any other operator keeping the mobile number the same. So, the churn rates have gone up, gone up. So, I'm not keeping a track of the churn rate at the moment. But churn rate means how many people, like suppose you have 1 lakh subscribers with you and say 5,000 subscribers leave you. So, churn rate will be 5%. 5%. Okay, fine. So how many you know? 
how, how many people in terms of the opening subscriber base you have give every month there will be a subscriber base which will be calculated new additions will be there and churn will be there and the final will be called net ads suppose 10,000 people joined and 5,000 people left so net ads are 5,000 so the company will look at how much net ads uh, you know net ad has been made to the subscriber base so if you look at the subscriber base which is in million so which is 36 crores for you know Bharti Airtel 25 or 250 million or 25 crores for Vodafone idea and 42 crores with Reliance Geo or 420 million and just 30 lakhs for MTN or 3 million so that's the the bird's eye view about the telecom company in India and if you look at all the listed entities in India which are the three Bharti Airtel the market price of Bharti Airtel is 822 the, you know when they started they issued the share at 45 10 rupees face value and 35 rupees premium so today it is at 822 okay and Vodafone idea has gone down to 8 rupees 30 paisa uh, it was you know when they started in 2007 they uh, you know came up with an IPO where they offered the share at 75 bucks 10 rupees face value and 65 rupees premium so today it is available at 8 rupees 30 paisa I sold off all my shares close to about 90 rupees at that time as an employee I got shares I sold that everybody saying why I'm doing but I did that okay MTNL share is 29.5 okay and the market cap is given and market cap is 4 lakh 75 thousand it's a large cap company in India Airtel Vodafone is mid cap and MTNL becomes a tiny small cap company in India so that's the kind of a situation as of now it's a PSU operating only in four metros No, BSNL is a state-owned uh, company and MTNL is basically, again, maybe they, they are owned by central government, but uh, they are called by two different names. MTNL is a company which is listed in the stock exchange. BSNL is not listed in the stock exchange, but both are controlled, uh, you know, major st stake is with the government of India. Okay. So, BSNL is offering, you know, their services in states like Andhra Pradesh, BSNL, Delhi, MTNL. If the name only changes, but they are providing the mobile telephone. Uh, definitely, but market cap cannot be calculated because the company is not listed. Company is not listed. Okay, it doesn't have a share price which is there in the stock exchange. Fine. So we can still calculate a market cap kind of on the basis of the valuation, but that we are not doing at the moment. Uh, they, they are not competing with each other because MTNL is present in a different server, and BSNL is present in, in only in states. So they are not competing with each other. Only in Delhi, Calcutta, Mumbai, and Chennai. Fine. These are the four places where the MTNL is present. Uh, if I'm right, there are only four places. Okay. And I'm definitely right about that. And all other places, they are BSNL. Okay. Maybe things have changed. I don't know. But that was the state when I was there. It was like this. Okay. And I think currently it also is like that. You can Google it and find out. Now, mobile services, I told you, started in 1995. They started in 1995. India is the world's second largest telecom market by subscribers. I mean, of course, China is being sitting at the top because they are the highest population. Fastest growing in the world. Okay. One of the fastest growing, I would say. Services are provided in 20, 22 telecom circles or service areas. So, whole of India is divided into 22 telecom circles. Then, Airtel, Reliance, Jio, Vodafone, Idea are the major players in the market. Okay, so these are the three players which are the major players. MTNL being a very small and BSNL also not a big one. So we'll see how much BSNL has. So my mobile subscribers today uh, in the last quarter, second quarter of the year, year very close to uh, I mean number as of today, there are 117 crore people who uh, own a mobile or who are on mobile network in India. Reliance is having 40 crores. Bharti 36, Vodafone 26 crores and BSNL 11 crores, MTNL only 32 lakhs. So this is the split of the total number of subscribers. I'll share the slides. You can always look at that. Okay. And there will be some exercise we'll be doing after that. Okay. When we understand how to do modeling, this is very interesting. So you will be making a, a, a model for, you know, a telecom company like idea. Okay. Which is a very easy one. Reliance Geo is 40 crores. Uh, 
हाँ भारती इज सेकेंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ नंबर ऑफ सब्सक्राइबर्स इन टर्म नंबर ऑफ सब्सक्राइबर्स इट इज रिलायंस विच इज द हाइएस्ट एंड भारती इज नंबर सेकेंड दे आर लूजिंग द सब्सक्राइबर ना आई जस्ट इंट्रोड्यूस टू यूर वन मोर कंसेप्ट लेटर ऑन सो दिस विल आई मीन क्लैरिफाई वॉट इज सेंग बट लेटर ऑन ओके जस्ट होल्ड ऑन आई इट विल बी कमिंग yeah it's a abida negative yeah they they just announced that they become abida positive i was just reading that become first i mean after long time they become abida positive now okay so mobile subscribers as i told you market share is like this which we have seen already bsnl is 9.96 others are 35 31 22 and 28 so we used to watch all these numbers with a great interest when i was in telecom and then the telecom was in going up you know we were first below the landline numbers landline numbers there only 30 lakh people who own mobile landline so we crossed the landline i was part of it then you know it has crossed and the landline has become a very small number people have surrendered their landline okay so it is only you know, to just to tell you one thing you know when in uh, that was the year 2000 no 1995 or 96 or something you know maybe that so you know i was working uh, now 85 you know 85 i qualified as a chartered accountant and 86 and 87 worked as a private company and then i i was working with a hospital called batra hospital in delhi for few years <coughs> so you know i needed a telephone there was no mobile because it was 86 87 okay 1995 only mobile came so i went to the telephone exchange i was staying in janakpuri so i went to the rajouri garden exchange and i applied for a telephone connection i deposited i think 1000 rupees or 3000 rupees as a deposit and they gave me a slip and i asked them the second question when my telephone will be installed he says sir it is written on the this receipt probable date so it was you know 1980 uh, say 7 and they said it will be close to 2001 when my telephone will be installed in my house so there's a 15 years waiting list and everywhere in india delhi was 15 years so you can imagine everywhere it was different different and more and more so i said 2001 but i need a telephone very badly in my house i had to wait for 15 years to get a telephone connection so uh, then i walked out and you know somebody told me that i can because since i am working in a hospital i can apply for a emergency phone which can be installed within no time but i have to pay double the rate but since my company was willing to pay that so i applied for a a phone call a phone and the phone was sanctioned and but it took almost 3 months to get a telephone again even after it was sanctioned because you know there was so much of corruption the line man was the guy who was ruling the this thing so there were people who were carrying a telephone small telephone instrument on a cycle and roaming around and you know going and fiddling with the mtnl box so i said sir mera telephone lagna hai to bola maine i showed him the order he says no kuch jumper cable hi nahi hai iske andar short hai jab aa jayegi to lag jayega so i you know that time i just took out 50 rupees note and gave it to him and immediately installed it <laughs> then i realized that i should have done it much faster to get a telephone connection but nowadays if you need a telephone it takes matter of hour or even less than that to become a mobile and sometimes you have a mobile connection you just throw it off because you think ye theek nahi hai dusra wala laga dete and you mind your drawers there will be at least two or three sims lying all the time and mobile sim you get as a gift along with you know every purchase it was almost given freely to some at time to promote mobile telephone about 10 years back So, so we have come from a stage where you know it took 15 years to get a telephone connection. Now it becomes kind of a few hours kind of a job. Okay. So uh, now, if you look at the revenue which I have already shared, BSNL is close to about 17,000 crores of revenue. Vodafone, Idea, Airtel, we have already seen. So numbers you can always go through. MTNL only with 1,000 crores of revenue, and uh, every the margin, uh, of course, I told you Reliance is uh, uh, is making. Uh, 39,000. Bharti is highly profitable in terms of their profitability. Vodafone is still making uh, a bit of positive, okay, 16,000 crores. MTNL is a loss-making company. MTNL EBITDA is negative. So average revenue per user, and now this is a blended ARPU. Postpaid and prepaid together. Of course, prepaid is 98%. Okay, and postpaid is hardly any component. So it is you know like the consolidated ARPU is close to the 134 in India. Okay. then number of employees if you look at so these are the number of people they have you know uh, giving employment reliance total strength is about 17500 and uh, sorry i am just blocking your way 
you can make a come here and sit if you want. So, Bharti 32,000, Vodafone 13,000, BSNL loss making company 63,000 because it's a public company. So, government, you know, fulfills all their employment, this thing. So, that's a, something which we can always, you know, can Google and find out. So, that's not part of the, this thing. Otherwise, you know, we will be missing out so many things which are more interesting, okay. So, that's a kind of a, this thing. It's a government policy, you know, they want to employ more and more people, okay. It's a? Ha. Ha. They have to be there, you know. Ha. Because if the, all the other private players, they raise their hands, BSNL is always there or MDN is always resting. De definitely. Ha. But of course, that is again an old myth. Now the private players are offering much better. Of course, we always, you know, this was a theory long back. This was the mindset of the government people that we should have something of the government, like airlines should be the government, you know, a telephone company should be the government. It's a very, you know, I mean, thing which is so, you know, security point of it's so important that something should be owned by the government. But the government has failed in all areas, all fronts. So whether that myth uh, or that, you know, logic still holds goods or not, we don't know because private players are equally responsible, okay, and uh, they're doing a good job from last so many years. Now, Delhi density, if you look at India, it is 85 people per 100 people who own mobile, okay. Urban, it is 130, okay, and rural areas 58 per 100. Bangladesh, its combined average is 107, which is higher than India. Canada, it's 85. China, it is 119. Of course, I think more urbanization in China compared to India. Germany, again, a, a company, a country which is more of urban nature, 128. Japan, 154. Nepal 135, 131, which is highly very high, okay. I mean, there also there is a lot of rural and urban, but this is a combined number. Huh? No, this is how many people own a mobile per 100 in any country. So, per 100, kitne log has mobile hai? So, that's a, this thing. Fine. So, it's like this. You know, when I was in telecom way back in 2001, when we were making, you know, how many people should be getting mobile, you know, my job was to make a plan, like, you know, today we'll be doing the financial modeling. So, I was doing it for the purpose of my budget. Okay, this is very important, you know, I was supposed to make a, this thing a plan for the next year. How much profit the company is going to make, what is the total amount of capital expenditure we'll be doing, okay, and we'll be supposed to make a presentation to the CEO of the company and get, uh, make a present to even the board, Tata Bidwans and it &E, all the people were there. Uh, in data, or one moment, we used to be sometimes present in the final week when we used to get the budget of the whole company approved. I happened to be there. So, uh, so the first time when you know we were making a budget, back in 19, 2001 when I joined, you know, I was again new to the telephone. Of course, there after I picked up a lot of knowledge, as you can understand, still I have that. So, in 2001, uh, you know, I was supposed to make a budget. I was pretty new to the telecom company. So, I was struggling, you know, how to make a, you know, what will be our revenue in the next year? In what will be the I was in, I, I, I was in Bidla Tata at and which is called Idea Vodafone today. Okay. It was called RPE Cellcom, that circle where I was there. It was taken over Bidla Tata at and and the Bidla Tata at was taken over, the company was reaching into Idea Cellcom, and then Idea Cellcom got merged with Vodafone. So, there's a lot of, you know, things that happened in the companies. So, um, we are making a budget. So then I you know, checked up with my marketing uh, vice president and uh, then he shared some reports with me. Like, you know, Blackhawk and other companies, you know, investment analysis, they are making a cost. And, you know, we have only 50 lakh people who own mobile. And in Madhya Pradesh, we had only 60,000 people who own mobile. And Ideas Circular was only having 20,000 mobile. We had Circular, which I was working with. Very small number. So uh, then we took the BlackRock number and some more, you know, uh, uh, reports, which, uh, you know, uh, after reading that, we understood that there would be a huge explosion in the number of people who own mobile in India. And they, they said we are very conservative in, you know, estimating the next 10 years, people who will be owning mobile in India. So this is a very conservative number. You know, it was going from like 50 lakhs to 10 crore people who would be having mobile, which is unthinkable that time. You know, there are a couple of things which I tell you which was told and which became almost like a dream, okay. So, you know, then we said what to do. How do we, you know, 
look at you know how many people will buy mobile in whole of madhya pradesh how many people will buy in indore how many people will buy in bhopal how many people will buy in gwalior so i was more bothered about madhya pradesh so uh, then you know uh, the idea struck that we should look at the surrogate products how many people own a car those people who own a car they will go mobile okay so we found out how many cars were there in each and every state in every every city of that part and then we said only you know gradually in next 2 3 years every person who is owning a mo- car will buy a mobile now that that era had passed then we moved on to number of scooters surrogate product number of scooters how many people have a scooters they will buy mobile then number of air conditioners or number of you know uh, and TVs then finally you know our boss said now the time has come to look at how many cycles we have in india <laughs> so all the people who own a cycle will own a mobile because the things have become from you know 16 rupees to you know one uh, paisa per second billing you know now even that is gone it's unlimited calls you pay us some and then you don't have to pay any other money so so then you know finally it was you know when i left it was you know cycles but then i was you know about to prepare some lecture for the students like you about few years back then i just came and understood a matchbox strategy which was you know mentioned in airtel presentation i said what is this matchbox strategy then i found for the reading that anywhere where the matchbox is in sold we can sell a sim so from cycle to matchbox <laughs> so that is the kind of a journey the telecom industry has gone through so it became a matchbox strategy jahan matches bikti hai wahan sim bhi bikega to wahan bhi aap sim bejo ban wale ke baad sim bejo sab jagah bejo theek hai so that was the thing so then you know the spectrum i just told you now the spectrum has you know it was 800 which was with reliance 900 with the incumbent two players who were given the license the first time then 1800 the fourth player who got the license then 1800 had further scope but the strength was very poor and defense forces were very di- very difficultly vacating the, this spectrum so it was creating a lot of problem for the new players who joined they were you know wanted to use this like idea in delhi but the uh, the same equip- the, the spectrum was used by defense also so it was you know ca- causing a hurdle and airtel was losing its name because in delhi people complained and then 1800 is a very inferior megahertz uh, bandwidth it requires double the investments as against you know the investment which is required in 900 number of towers you have to place so if you have to put one tower in 900 you have to put two towers to have the same coverage so it became very expensive and the government was not cooperating defense people were still using vacancies they were very slow in vacating the you know frequency band so that it can be used by the private player who has been allotted who has paid such a huge amount of money then then there came 2100 free 2300 2000 which is used now by 4g 5g 3g you know they came from 1g 2g 3g 4g and now we talking about 5g and 5g has been launched by airtel and idea is about to launch it so this spectrum is high in speed okay but requires more capital investment you know as it goes from 2100 to 2000 the speed the capability of in terms of carrying the data it is more used for data earlier you know all these spectrum 800 900 18 were mainly meant for voice uh, telephony and very less for data and uh, the data was not being done it was moving in kilobyte speeds like 256 kilobyte per second now it's gone to gigabytes okay so 2100 3000 2500 has actually changed the whole thing and it has become broadband on air with this advent of these uh, this thing so just to look at this a little bit because i have seen a lot of things so you know this is you know a, a, a diagram the architecture where you know you are holding a mobile here okay the call goes to the tower bds you know this is a this is a tower which is called bds base receiver transmitter or something like that it will come in the next slide or rather written base transmitter station okay then from bds it goes to another telephone equipment wireless equipment called bsc and then goes to the exchange finally it is moving from tower to tower then goes to the bsc bsc is what base station controller and from controller class to the exchange and then the exchange you know suppose i am making a call my call will first go to the exchange okay then it will be it will be going to him from my exchange the packets of information will be sent to the nearest tower and it will travel to him so all the calls are routed through ms okay now i'll tell you why and what is the significance now mnc sub msc which is a exchange telephone exchange the hub of telephone exchange it has one gateway msc also 
देर सम एम एस सी और एक्सचेंज विच इज कॉल द गेट वे अगर कॉल को इंग्लैंड ले जाना है तो द टेलीफोन द पैकेट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन विल बी पास ऑन टू दिस गेट वे सो देर बी ऑलवेज वन गेट वे एम एस सी इन डेली एवरी डे एंड देन द कॉल विल बी सेंड वाई एप द fiber or through wireline the wireless and it will go to england so we we'll talk about that now there are couple of things here eir auc hlr and vlr now the two most important terms are hlr and vlr home location register and digital location register so please understand that it's very important it is very important it's not easy you know like you have to say it's not easy HLR is a home location register. Very important. So every company like Idea, Vodafone, Delhi, we have an HLR. Okay, which is called a home location register. It's like an Excel sheet. Think about an Excel sheet. It's carrying my name. I go to Idea. I say I want my phone. My name will be there. My phone number, which is called MS IBN number. Technically, we'll talk about that. So that number will be there. Then my phone uh, SIM number, which is a unique number. Will be another number which will be there, okay? And what kind of you know facility I am having, what kind of plan I have, you know, what everything will get detailed into the phone location list. That means it is a list that will contain all the subscriber details who have taken connection of idea Delhi. Okay, fine. Now there is something called VLR. VLR is called the visitor location register. Not any given point of time. the people who are making calls will be co- making in delhi using delhi network idea network will people coming from mumbai will coming from london people coming from new york using the idea network and i am also using idea this thing so all the people who are currently active whether the idea people connection which is taken from delhi or from tens who are coming they will be all getting populated in the vlr so vlr will tell you how many people are active on a network of each a particular company or each uh, operator circle by circle okay very important now when i suppose i go to mumbai or suppose i go to india or suppose let's say i go to mumbai and i you know open my mobile the moment i open my mobile it will uh, you know search the network of course it will give first first i get id because i am a id customer but i need to put in that sort of error i don't know how you can do or not But since I have not traveled so much, I am not even then even bothered about bothered because it becomes very cheap. So I latch on to Airtel servers. I am a Mumbai Delhi customer, I am latched on to Airtel in Mumbai. Or maybe in England I am latched to Orange, some other company, because ID is not there. So a signal will be sent from a mobile to the Mumbai operator Airtel because I am latched on to Airtel. It will, you know, copy. Sorry. If you look at the MSD number and the EC number, and immediately recognize that this is a phone, a telephone coming from Delhi, Idea. So it will send a signal to Accra, Delhi, that this guy has come from Romania. It will happen in nanoseconds. So if you go to you know Accra and check whether I am there, the moment it will check, it will copy and paste all the information on the VLR of Mumbai, Delhi. And in turn, what will do? It will tell my location where I am presently in Mumbai. Okay, location because each tower, BTS, has a unique code worldwide. So it will populate the code in the HLR of Delhi. So HLR of Delhi will know where I am. Under which BTS I am in Mumbai, Kolkata. So Kolkata BTS number will be flashed on the HLR. Suppose if no, uh, for example, forward me, Monica, Monica calls me. Okay, and I am in Mumbai. So the call will go to you know at, uh, Delhi, and Delhi say, okay, I am in actually so and so BTS. So the call will be sent all the way to Mumbai. Okay, 
tracking my DTS number the call will reach to me and Monica will say hello, I say hello. So I can, if it happens in another sentence, so the call is set. Okay. So we realize basically the, pe the, the people who are uh, basically present, currently deployed and there is a location code which is associated with the tower which gets populated in the uh, database of the company so that the calls can happen. Is that okay? So there is something called C7 signal being made through which the VR and the chat communicate with each other. Is that okay? Anyway, we don't have to remember, but just remember this that there is a VR and the chat. Now, one more very interesting thing. Suppose IDI is saying that we have 25 crores people who are our subscribers. But when we look at the VR, we find we are only 20 crores. Of course, we take out all the people who come from outside. Okay. In the actually who are using the network ID, not the entire 25 crores. Maybe some people have switched off their phones. Some have switched, I mean, thrown their cells into their doors and are not using it. But they are still part of the idea because they have paid some money and still having some expiry date. Okay? The even with expiry date has happened, so uh, the, the company will take some time to charge them out of the system so that they can use the uh, number again. So in process, uh, what will happen is called HLR to VLR ratio. So HLR number of, I mean the published number which are there, which we have seen, they are all HR numbers. But when they look at the VLR ratio, it is much lower. So when I asked, you know, the telecom person, uh, his name is Nandita, I said, Nandita, what is the VLR ratio nowadays? He says, she says 40 percent. Nandita, 40 percent looks very low, yeah. Because I know it was close to about 70 percent. He said, no, Reliance Geo has around 40 to 50 percent, but we may have 70 percent. Okay, so anyway, is that clear? Any questions here, please? Someone yes, may ask? Is it interesting or? Very, very, interesting. very interesting. So let's move on. So this is called BTS. These are towers which we all know the towers which are put on a rooftop or they can be even ground based towers, huge towers which are planted on the earth. And then, you know, when, when you're passing through, you know, uh, highways, we'll find the towers are there. They're called ground based towers. Okay, fine. And this is called the BSC and MSC, the exchanges. So these are just the equipment. So when I first time when I landed from a manufacturing company to a telecom company, I found that these were the things which are there in a very small place. What we are doing, we don't know. In a manufacturing company, what was being produced, I could see, I could understand. But in telephone, no understanding. And we were pay making huge payments to DOT, license fee, EA fees, spectrum fees and all. Okay. And I'll tell you, there's so many other, uh, I mean, line items which we'll talk about. So I, uh, and I was, you know, the guy who was supposed to make budgets and everything and operating plans for the company. So I ordered certain books from Amazon way back, about 20 years back. So it took almost two, three months to get some book from Amazon. So my patience was running high. So I just got hold uh, a manual of Ericsson and Nokia's. Okay. And read them thoroughly. And, you know, there was some, whatever material which was there on the internet everywhere I started, I started interacting with the people. I started spending time in BSC, MSC where they were, you know, being installed because, you know, when I was working in manufacturing, I used to spend a few nights in a plant to understand, you know, how the production happens and to understand because I was supposed to make all the plans for the company. If I'm not very comfortable, that's why I used to feel very comfortable when I was discussing the plans. And people will say, how do you know what is happening, 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 what is these are, you know, I will come to that. We'll come to that. Each company has their own towers. Okay. Each operator. Now, earlier, that's a good question. So, I'll just like to reply a little bit here. You know, everybody was putting their own towers. Now, the competition set in and you have to pay rent for a tower. You have to install a DG set if there's a power cut. You have to put a air conditioners on the wireless equipment which are housed on the rooftop so that, you know, in heat summer doesn't go down. So, you have to put shelters you know, there were companies who were making green shelters where the the, the, the the temperature will not go up so much high so that it can damage your, you know, all the equipment which is lying on a rooftop. Uh, there are a lot of equipments which you have to place. And then the, on the top, you have to put all the wireless equipment like BTS and other things, okay, which are wireless. So there are some two kinds of things which are there, passive equipment and 
active equipment. So passive is basically all this shelter, DG set, voltage stabilizer, air conditioner, and, and all those things. And the active ones are the wireless, the BTS, okay, which actually transmits the data. Okay. So government said, okay, you can now share your passive infrastructures with each other. So and we don't want so many towers being coming on each of the rooftop, which is ca causing a lot of, you know, a public debate. Uh, a lot of, a lot of people talking about that and, you know, it was cramping up the whole, you know, the city and everything. So then, you know, it was decided that, you know, you can build up a tower and then you can share. So the rent would get shared. Like suppose I was paying 6,000 rupees rent for a root tower in suppose Shakti Nagar. So that I'll be sharing with two more people. Okay. Or three more people. Two, I mean two because now there are only two left. One plus, I mean three players, two more companies. So that means my rent will get become 2,000. Suppose I'm paying 6,000. So this way I can, you know, save on my expenditure of running a tower. Okay, or running a wireless equipment. Yeah, Coming. only only the passive equipments, only the not the BTS, not the tower itself, which carries the calls. Okay, they were that was not allowed by the DOT okay? that you can't share the spectrum and this thing. You can share all the passive equipments. Okay, fine. Now, so only the passive equipments were being shared. Now, then they decided, then there was their business, okay. There was a company, the tower companies we started coming, American Tower, Indus Tower, you know, there are many companies which are listed company in the stock exchange. They, you know, construct towers and they lease it on to the various companies. Now, telecom company got an idea that they will sell all their towers to a tower company called Indus Tower, which was, you know, holding all the towers of Idea, Airtel and everybody. And they were only, you know, in the business of towers and they were providing this tower services to all the telecom companies. So now there was an Indus Tower company, which is a listed company. Okay, we can check in that. You can go to the screen and find out, you know, what share price it is trading and what is the revenue they're generating. So, uh, so that's it. Okay, towers were being shared by them. Okay, fine. Uh, so, okay. Now we come to the Airtel. Okay, but we will be greatly focusing on Vodafone idea because that financial modeling will be doing. Okay, pa. Ah, uh, please, you are free. Anybody who wants to leave, so we'll have a five ten minutes of break. Of course, there's a no break inside, but we'll have maybe twelve forty five. We'll have a break, okay? Fine for five ten minutes, okay? So Airtel, but we'll be focusing more on idea because it's very easy to make a financial model out of idea, but become very difficult to make a financial model of Airtel. It requires a lot of effort and time. I'll tell you why. Airtel is an integrated telecom company in operation with 18 countries. So they are present worldwide. Idea is just present in India. So the job becomes easier. Okay. ARPUs can be different, 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 different. So you have to project ARPUs for each country separately. So uh, telecom, uh, they are, you know, they, it's an integrated telecom player. Now that is the word itself is very heavy because they are not just providing mobile. They are into DTH. They are into, you know, Dish TV. Okay, they are into uh, a fixed line, landline. Okay, so the company's diversified service range includes mobile, voice, and data solutions using 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G technologies. Now, the 5G is more, I mean, having a higher speed, so I'm skipping that. You can just read about that. It provides telecom under wireless and fixed line technology. So, there is a, even mobile as well as fixed line they're providing international long distance connectivity. That means, suppose if a call has to be carried to England. Then idea fails. So idea ki call agar England jari hai, so they'll hand over the call to Airtel guy at the gateway MSC. Then the call will be taken to England by Airtel network and terminated to somebody else's network. So if they are, if suppose I make a call to someone from here, so there are three, three operators in board. Let me use the idea. The transmitter or the access provider who is actually taking my call home.
But now the things have become so vast that terminators say brilliant. That means because you know, my calls will also get terminated in your network. And your calls are going to also get terminated in my network. So we will not settle anything. It will build anything. After you will get out of the network, over the digital network, because it will be your share. So things are becoming a little bit cheaper now. <laughs> एक बात याद रखना कि ये मेरा भूल है ना ये आपको याद दिलाना है क्योंकि मैंने फॉरगेट इट तो इसको लगा दो यार कोई I got the charger back after two days. Another professor brought it to my home. So when I was in the car, I was in the car. I was in the car. You know, mobile is all in charge. Okay. So it provides telecom services under the wireless and fixed line technology, national, international, long distance. So there are two more licenses. The government says that if you have to carry the traffic uh, nationally from one state to another because they are servants, so you have to take a license. The government is paying money for everything. International ILD license. If you have to take a call from out, India to outside, you should have a license. The government makes money there. So, so they are providing all the services for international long distance travel. That is, you know, the Airtel and Reliance has laid down fiber all across the world under the sea called submarine cables. So, which kind of carries all the traffic. Airtel has also done. And even, you know, BSNL both had done it. I don't know if it is part. It became part of uh, Tata's. Okay. And uh, IDEA is not having, but IDEA is having, you know, uh, IAD. I mean, NLD. That means within the states, they have their own network now. So, they don't have to pay any money for carrying on. All so, they are into broadband, so digital TV and complete integrated telecom solution to enterprise customers. So, I will just talk about that hurriedly. So, they have this much revenue segment. So, if you have to see at uh, Airtel, they have five revenue, revenue segments. So, if you are make to make a financial model, you must know how much money they have been making in each business. Mobile services, which remains about 78% of their business. Home services. Home services is a landline connection and a broadband in your house. Digital TV, DD, DTH. Okay, uh, Airtel business that means they provide solutions to all the you know uh, companies full solution looking after all the telecom needs tower infrastructure services so uh, they are also you know providing they were sharing towers now it's become all part of the Indus towers or American towers they're holding it so they have a tower infrastructure still they own some towers which are shared maybe okay so if you look at their segment wise sales 78 for 74 percent is mobile Airtel Business, which is the solution to the enterprise, is 14%. Home service is 2%, providing landline and uh, broadband there. Tower infrastructure, the towers sharing. Digital TV, that means you buy the uh, you know, connection for running your channels at home. Okay. Broadband is coming under this, na? home service. Or then mobile service may be broadband hai, or home service may be broadband. Hai. Dono taraf ka broadband. If you have a telephone connection, liya hai, to uske jagan si broadband le sakte ho. Mobile, yeah, aaj kal sab to, sab blur ho hai, sab hai. So, mobile services, mobile services, we have postpaid, prepaid, roaming, internet, value added services. So, every this thing there. Now, we are looking at the breakup. After this break is over, we'll have a break, okay? So, mobile services, postpaid, connection, prepaid, postpaid, on, only 2% or even less than that, prepaid 98%. The first time I made a plan, we made huge prepaid and very less postpaid. Because postpaid is more, you know, remunerative for a company. You know? the, they're a little costlier. It gives you more ARPU. So that time the ARPU of a postpaid was 1000 and prepaid ARPU was just 500. So we have actually budgeted more of prepaid and less of postpaid. That was going to be happening. So we have done it like that. So when we went to, you know, our uh, CEO, uh, his name was Sanjeev Vaga. He was, he's now retired. He was, a, a, you know, a very big hasti in telecom. He was chairman of the COI association and comes on TV very regularly. I don't know, recently I have not seen him, he's still there. So he interviewed me, I got selected from him. So uh, we were making a presentation to him. So he said, hey, uh, and my CEO was Ashok Sood, and I was the CFO of uh, Madhya Pradesh. So he asked, ki, yeah, 
आपने पोस्टपेड बहुत कम लिए हुए हैं अभी तुम्हारे जैसे बहुत सारे लोग हैं जो पोस्टपेड वहां लेंगे तो इंक्रीज पोस्टपेड बिकॉज यू नो इज आइडिया वॉज दैट वी शुड शो मोर प्रोफिटेबल कंपनी बिकॉज ही इज गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट द बजट टू द टाटा बोर्ड बिल्डा बोर्ड ही कॉन्ट से कंपनी यू नो मेकिंग जस्ट करोड़ रुपीज दिस थिंग मध्य प्रदेश इज मेकिंग वेरी लेस so he said more take i mean convert you should have at least 50% of postpaid and 50% prepaid no he was not right because everything was actually migrating towards prepaid okay so prepaid postpaid sir i am going to put in the price of 20 the telephone actually you need to buy a little bit so the person can do the telephone need to the hold on hold on hold on you know what we were doing was way back in 2000 2003 we were you know going to all the telecom operators and having meetings with them all the finance people you know i used to go and meet and we used to tell them bhai apne tariffs jo hai ghatao mat you know there was a price war everybody was trying to pull down the prices so we were saying agar price kam ho jayega to every company will be in losses so hold on with the prices but that time we were not able to succeed because everybody wanted to more more and more volume so that more and more subscribers come ultimately it will be profitable and you know all the telecom companies they are burning money cash we were burning cash we were all in losses okay but because people wanted more because we had a huge pie you know 100 crore people sitting for mobile and we were only two or three crore people who were mobile that time so we were you know graduating from more and more so they said we don't put any breaks we'll keep i mean slashing the charges so that you know more and more people so th- those people who are charging more that time you know people could not shift to from one mobile operator to another because your number would get changed so the number portability came and then you know we found that we can change it without any shifting okay so we'll talk about roaming internet value add service is that okay so this is what the mobile roaming is when you go to you know outside ha roaming is now you know there's an unlimited call if you uh, 399 you know this thing std roaming all become roaming international if you have go outside you have to still pay okay fine so you make some money on roaming fine and you have to make some expense for the roaming when you are gone to england though you have to pay to the the other guy the money the carrier who is taking their call to england okay fine so mobile services there are just uh, uh, two more slides or three more slides before we have a break so they have 11 lakh outlets in india which is helping their mobile they are offering mobile services so if there is any connection you want new connection or any service network presence 8 lakh 95000 villages and towns they are present in india this gives them a 96% per, per, coverage all across india okay the maximum pan india presence okay everybody has a pan india presence now home services fixed line telephone broadband services covers 847 cities of india then digital tv this is you know direct to home uh, digital tv services offers 670 channels okay then airtel business this is a solution for this thing enterprise mobility applications that means providing services to all the companies who want their connection submarine cables and satellite network all across the globe so that they can carry you know calls uh, from one place to another global network running across 2 lakh 50000 kilometers called r kilometers i have deleted that so that is a t- terminology which is used in telecom covering 50 countries and 5 5, 5 continents then the tower infrastructure as i told you that they can share the towers and they are still i mean uh, they have the tower infrastructure mm-hmm. facilities also okay so uh, so this we have already done okay uh, last slide for the break so this is the sales this is the operating expenses abida fixed ex- assets how many they have total assets they have deployed 3 lakh crores equity capital is 72000 crores and borrowings is 2 lakh 17800 huge borrowings if you calculate you know um, debt to equity ratio just calculate and find out what's the debt to equity ratio and um, so it basically borrowing divided by the equity so 2 lakh 70000 so it's almost like 3 okay three times so highly leveraged company and why the borrowing is come all the spectrum charges which they pay to the government they have borrowed all the money fine if there would be no spectrum charges they would have been you know uh, had a very small amount of You will less than a lakh rupees of borrowing. Okay, some borrowing will be there. If the government has not charged anybody, given the free spectrum, okay. So it's twelve forty-three. So we meet at one o'clock. Is that okay? Are we covering these things? I mean, it's very time. It's very time. Right, Mr. Kapoor.
कोई बात नहीं ढाई बजे नहीं है ना तो जाएगा मजा आ रहा है बहुत ज्यादा मजा आ रहा है कितना ज्यादा आ रहा है मैं जब स्टूडेंट्स को पढ़ाने सब कहता पढ़ाते रहिए तो मुझे मजा आता पढ़ाने में यार वो कॉफी तो लगा ठंडियों के बाद में आप लाना एक बजे एक बजे अभी आ सही में हिमांशु वो ले लेना अटेंडेंस कोई भी ले लो रात के लेक्चर है और क्या क्या वो तो प्रीतम है सही बात है आपकी बात है